one two increase female female entrepreneurship partnership rates women should reach the boardrooms where decisions are made easing the doing business for women fourth improving women's access to business support system we also need to make sure that women have access to skills finance and commercial practice women still have a limited access to vocational training and development opportunities fifth increasing networking opportunities for women uh, such events as we are having now these are the events that will encourage networking so it should be and we should all on reciprocal basis this should be an example that now that pakistan has come with a big delegation we expect and hope and pray that whenever there is something in pakistan all of you will participate ladies and gentlemen entrepreneurship is a behavior and a step by step process it is critical at every phase of economic development and firms growth irrespective of size it is by no means limited to starting a business high long term growth flows from unhindered flow and growth of ideas entrepreneurship is a vital part of any agenda for job creation and economic development keeping this in view south asia can achieve a lot of ensuring a comprehensive and strategic approach to supporting women entrepreneurship with this words i ensure you that sark chamber women entrepreneur council will continue to do all that is possible to support women in business and those aspiring to be in business we will need the support of all of you to achieve our shared objectives because when women progress i believe only then nations progress and it is no more an option but a necessity that women should take part in the economic development of a country to make the country progressive ladies and gentlemen i will take this opportunity and uh, would like to share with you some of the initiatives taken taken by shwet pakistan that with the support of giz we are organizing a workshop which the first workshop will be in sri lanka the next has not been decided but the third will surely be in pakistan so uh, i hope it will be beneficial for all so this is the training of the trainers so you need to be sending people who need to be trained and who can further train and another initiative uh, which is half baked half done the presentation has been done to the chief minister punjab who has agreed we are going into making a crafts village and in that i have recommended that we have a sark pavilion where space would be provided to all sark countries i have had a chance uh, because as being a parliamentarian i have had a chance of meeting the few of the ambassadors of the sark countries and they were quite enthusiastic and they were agreeing with me that if space provided we can have a permanent display space from different sark countries and this can promote connectivity and promote peace and harmony which i am sure the women 
can carry it forward in a much better way. Then uh, the third initiative uh, we are taking up is that uh, we are starting. It's on paper, uh, it's clear, but it's Shwik Startup Challenge Cup. And that is Shwik plans to hold up, uh, start up a challenge catering to all the eight countries in the SARC region. The main object of this Startup Challenge Cup are foster a cultural of entrepreneurship in SARC region with focus on women entrepreneurs. Develop healthy, healthy business competition among women entrepreneurs of the SARC region. Develop a women entrepreneurs directory of the SARC countries with all the participating women entrepreneurs. Increase startup business activities and create more economic activity in the region involving women. Award the top entrepreneur ideas and provide encouragement. And this is that we will be going to colleges also for students also who are coming out of the colleges and if they can come up with innovative new uh, plans ideas and there will be a jury in every country. I will be floating this plan to all the countries and there the jury will take up and decide which is the best plan, which has the best feasibility, which has a future, which has potential and then they will select one from each country and then ultimately the jury will uh, select one from the SARC region. And then that person, because we want to start this at the grassroots level also. And this process should be holding hands with the lowest segment of the society, the people who cannot afford. We have to take them along. We have to lift them up. We have to carry them. It is, and it is only then that we will be able to uh, make progress here also and hereafter also. So then these people, the selected entrepreneurs whose plans have been selected, they will be connected by another program which is the Adopt an Entrepreneur and this is, it will be adopted by the SCR which is the Social corporate responsibility of big business people. We have talked to them, they are willing to do it and then these entrepreneurs will be elected by them, supported by them till they come up with proper rewards and all. So uh, this is what is in the pipeline and I would like, we will be getting in touch through emails, you will be getting the plans because I need, to, we all should be working for the on new innovative entrepreneurship and encouragement should be given to students who are coming out and who are very keen to start up their businesses. And another thing that um, we are having an exhibition, Rexnet and Shrek Pakistan are holding an exhibition in the exhibition trade fair is 4th to 6th December and Pakistan is giving two stalls free of cost to each SARC country. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, something good that we are trying to do and get you all there. And uh, then on the 7th and 8th, there's a women conference and it's a SARC charter day. So there the vice chairs would be invited and free lodging and will be there. So uh, we would like to see and as we have participated, I think we expect the same way. Because it's only then, the region can only move if, if the big brother should remain as big brother and allow me to say if they don't become a bully's brother.
let them be a big brother, but not a bully brother. And uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, the connectivity part is there, I would like to suggest as this, I mean, I would take this opportunity as I am also a parliamentarian, I would take forward also, but as you uh, are sitting here, I have a food for thought for everybody. Lack of connectivity is a huge impediment for normalization of relations between countries, particularly among regional countries and neighbors. You know, it's, it's funny that we are connected by phone with every country, but we are not connected with India or India is connected with Pakistan. Our food, phones don't work. It's everywhere in the world, but we don't have it in India and Pakistan, which is, uh, I mean, to me, it's very surprising. Again, connectivity, as it is the theme of our conference, the frequency of flights between the two countries is appalling. Against an average of 25 flights per week between New Delhi and other SAAC countries, the frequency between New Delhi and Lahore is only one per week and two or three between Karachi and New Delhi in a week. We have no normal telecommunication links with Pakistan and India. Our SIMs don't work, they don't function. Even, you know, everywhere it's roaming, here it's not. The check posts for entry, exit for nationals of both countries should be increased. All international airports in both countries should be included. At the moment, at present, only Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Karachi, Lahore, they are there. There has been a noticeable cooling of relations between Pakistan and India in the past few months. This needs to be checked. The normalization process on the basis of sovereign equality and mutual respect must remain on track. It is therefore important that dialogue process should not be disrupted because there is no issue on this earth that when you sit down on the table, you can't solve it. But the need is that you should sit down and talk. So I think we should continue talking. And, uh, you know, I don't know, but I need to mention, you know, unless and until, unless and until the core issues are not solved, if the core issues remain at the bottom, they, the rest of the problems will not be solved. So we should sit down and seriously because the region is suffering because of our two countries. The people are suffering. There is too much poverty. There is malnutrition. There is illiteracy. And we need to work for the people. And uh, on a lighter note, I would like to ask the question, why for my, this is for my women who are sitting here, why did God create man first? Because a rough draft is always made before the master fine masterpiece. So we are all masterpieces, great achievers, and we can do a lot.